Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, thanks for clicking on my video. So today I decided to try something different. I recently saw that the queen herself, Jackie Ina, posted a foundation routine application video, tips and tricks for how to make your makeup last all day, and I decided to go ahead and try it out. So I did my makeup today using the steps that she said to try. This is what it looks like. It looks good, but you guys need to watch the application because you might be surprised. Before we get into the video, if you're new, I would love to have you join the family, so please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you know every single time I upload a video. We do hauls, tutorials, reviews, and we started doing hair. Your girl is doing hair, not this hair, but other videos <laughs> of hair. So. Also, please stay till the end of the video because I am featuring Treasure Box Luxury Eyelashes. And I had to look at it because the website shows the name a little different, but this is a black owned beauty brand and it is a woman here in Texas. I think this is where they shipped from. I'll have it all listed further into the video, but please stay till the end and check this out because that this is the lashes that I'm wearing right now. These are magnetic, and these are the best magnetic lashes I've ever tried. I'm going to let you know now, spoiler, these are bombs. So, if you want to see how I got this look and learn more about these lashes, stay tuned to keep on watching. Alright, I just want to start by saying it has never taken me this long to set up to film. Woosa. Okay, so today we're gonna do just a quick little beat, but I wanna show you guys some tips and tricks that I've learned mainly from YouTube on how to wear makeup during the summer and make your makeup last all day. Some of this stuff, I just watched Jackie Ina's recent video and I wanna try her technique for makeup. I'm going to be following along on my phone and seeing if I can do what she did. I have her video right here and we're just going to be following the queen herself of complexion and trying to see if I can make this come out right because she says trust the process. It's a little scary. So she does start off with priming her face for primer today. I'm gonna use a primer I haven't used before. This is the Urban Decay Optical Illusion Complexion Primer. It says that it's smoothing and pore perfecting. Y'all know that's mainly my concerns, helping keep these wrinkles at bay. I have never used this. I don't know when I got it. I think I got it from probably Urban Decay last summer during their sale, if I'm gonna be completely honest. She said that she has oily skin oily combination skin. I used to have oily skin. And y'all don't laugh at me. I literally have a napkin that I'm going to keep on because I'm a five-year-old and I never wear white because I always spill on myself and I'm going to wear and don't want to mess up my shirt. So y'all are going to hear the video playing in the background because I'm trying to follow along. Apply translucent powder underneath my foundation. I'm using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus powder in deep. She uses a sponge, but again, because I'm not oily, I don't want to pack this on my face too much. So I'm just gonna use a powder brush and lightly press it into my skin. That's one thing I have learned and we all need to learn. Beauty gurus all do things in a way that has worked for them. You have to take into consideration what your skin type is and what works for you. So. I can't follow everything Jackie does because I don't have the same skin type. I wanna make sure this lasts all day and I do know that this works. But what I am gonna do is take that slightly lighter concealer, this one here, before I even apply brow powder, pencil, anything, I'm actually gonna shape out the brow with this concealer first. So she is using the Too Faced Born This Way Multi Sculpt Concealer. I do have that as well in the shade Butterscotch, so I'm gonna use that. My brows are not as defined as hers because she gets her brows microbladed. I'm actually going to just draw in the bottom just a little bit to make them a little more even. 
and then I'm going to do her trick. Then I'm gonna take the concealer on my concealer brush and just lightly go underneath. And as you can see, this is not my normal bright concealer shade, but it is a little bit lighter. You can tell it definitely helps on the tail where it's a lot less defined. And again, guys, I apologize if you can hear the construction outside. This is literally all day, every day. Earlier they had music really loud and so I was thinking I wasn't going to be able to film but I guess my prayers were answered and it's been turned down so I was like let me hurry up and do this. Sponges for this but placement matters guys. Placement really does matter. So now she's using the same concealer and she is just going to put that on her. Now she took hers on a brush. She pats it out with a sponge, potato, patata. I like to use a brush and then push it in with a sponge. She talks about using the sponge to make sure that everything is seamless and that it gets into all the crevices. But honestly, that's why I like using a brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and press it in like she said. Now, one thing that I have picked up that she does not talk about, we put the powder on our face. I'm gonna spray my face, which is going to set that powder and also lock in my primer. I'm using the Urban Decay All Nighter. I use this every single time. I want my foundation to last a long time. And that is one of the tricks that I have learned that works really well is as you do the steps for your makeup, you go in and you use your setting spray throughout the whole makeup process to make everything stay. She decided to go ahead and do her eyes off camera, but I'm gonna do mine on camera because I also wanna show you guys, this is a very simple, easy look. I pretty much always do the same thing whenever I'm just doing like a, I need to do my, my makeup quick. I want a nice, cute little eyeshadow look and I need to hurry up and get out of the door. Today I'm gonna use the Wet n Wild Color Icon Palette in Lights Off. This is what it looks like here. Pretty neutral shades, there's greens. A little cool tone, but not too much. So I'm just gonna speed through this because I don't want, ooh, that's dark. <laughs> I don't want this to take up too much time, but I usually just start off with a light color in my crease, a little darker on my outer V, not as much as I normally do, and then decide if I wanna put a matte on my lid or a shimmer. It's usually a shimmer, but like more of a satin as opposed to like super foiled. And then I go about my business. So lighter color to blend, darker color to define color on the lid. That is literally every single time I do my makeup, that is what I do. All right, that is it for the eyes. I literally used three shades. I used this as my transition shade, the gray around the edge. I used this darker brown shade right here in my crease. And then I used this shade on my lid. That is it. I'm gonna contour first because like I said, we naturally have shadows along the perimeter of our face, okay? And it, even in our cheekbones, it's naturally a little shadowy just below our cheekbones. She takes it on a brush. She does not put it right on her face. And then she just starts blending it out where you normally contour. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And she said that the point of doing it this way is everything helps to blend more seamless and that you can use less product. So, I mean, the thing is when you're outside, like you don't wanna have a bunch of stuff on your face because it's all just gonna melt off. So I get it, it just, when you first start like this or if it's a new process, it looks a little crazy. So this is where we're gonna start with our contour. It looks pretty dark, but like she said, trust the process. 
is I take a little bit of my contour and just a little bit, you want like a really small pinpoint application brush. And I like sort of cheating a nose contour by hitting right right where the head of the brow starts and dragging all the way down to the corner of the eye right there. You can definitely see the difference that makes up there. And I, unlike Miss Jackie, do contour my nose. So I'm gonna put a little bit and just bring that down to help narrow that out. Again, you gotta do what works for you. Now, something else that I love doing is applying blush underneath my foundation. She starts off, I have not used this before, putting this pretty high up on her cheeks and she puts a good bit of it and then she just takes a brush and starts blending that out. And yes, it will look a little clownish. It will, but like I said, that's okay. We haven't concealed yet. Give me a chance to prove myself. Please. We need to know what Jackie's saying. Uh -huh. Okay, now it is time to conceal. <laughs> this is actually okay. my face. The key with this is only apply that corrector in the darkened areas. Don't apply corrector in the same way that you would your concealer because it will change the color of the concealer. You're just correcting. You're not highlighting with the color correcting, you're just correcting. And as you can see, this isn't like super, super full coverage. You really just want it to help balance. So you see how that looks a little less gray. And I'm only putting it where I have the darkness. I'm not putting this under my whole eye. The darkness is right here in these inner corners. So for all my girls out there with dark circles, this is how you deal with them. So we're just gonna let that sit. Ooh, this clown face though. I'm gonna take my sponge and lightly, lightly, lightly press over it. Now I also have this area down here. I am gonna do that a little bit because that is a problem area I have. Jackie either doesn't have it or doesn't care. So again, you have to do what works for you. Concealer to me looks much more obvious when you put it on top of foundation versus like highlighting underneath. Also highlight the bridge of my nose because I don't contour, we have to put some depth there or else your nose will just be flat and it just won't look, it won't look natural to the skin. She does just this tiny part on the bridge of her nose. And then she also does, which I've never done, but let's see, always willing to try something new here and on her chin. And then I'm gonna take the Pat McGrath concealer in the shade number 26. It is more of a medium coverage and I'm basically just gonna keep this kind of close to my nose. I'm not gonna go all the way out. One color that's a little bit closer to my skin tone, one that's really, really light. And if I need to add more concealer, I will, but I'm just gonna blend this out, blend these two shades blending. into each other and then start blending towards the outer part of my face. I just feel like, I don't really feel like I need to apply concealer all over my under eye anymore. I just feel I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna go just right in the inner corners to make sure that I get that nice and blended. And then she takes the bottom of her beauty blender and just goes around the edge where her Concealer meets her bronzer where her contour is and just blends all of that together so that it is not, it ain't looking too crazy, too harsh, so. All right, I feel like something's starting to come together. Still looking a little clownish, but let's go. That's what she's doing. Instead of waiting to finish your foundation, okay, like you typically used to do Suzette, this will be the time to take your setting spray and actually start using it with your foundation. Okay, here she says that she puts the foundation on her brush and then she spray sprays her brush. I'm gonna spray my whole face because I want to make sure that everything stays locked in. Ooh. I think we should have sat under these eyes. I'm gonna put some powder under my eyes. I'm doing this because my under eyes crease. I don't know if she's fortunate enough not to have that problem or she did it off camera, but I'm gonna do it now because I don't want this to look bad later. So just a light little bit of powder on these inner corners. 
But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do a light spritz on my face. I'm gonna take a drop of that foundation and before I hit my face, I'm actually gonna spray my brush. And sometimes I take a bit of the foundation and even blot it off. And starting around my mouth area, I'm gonna start applying that product. I'm not applying a ton. I'm not applying a ton. But the little bit that I applied is gonna go a long way. We're gonna spread that foundation as much as we can. And the thing is with this, you go over everything. But the great thing is, because I've already done like half the work with my concealer, I don't need that much foundation. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna take, wait, where's my set here? It's just coming together. Yeah. Instead of waiting. I do feel like I'm losing a little bit of my contour. More on this side than the other side, but I can always go back with my bronzer. I'm gonna add some setting powders. I don't really use Huda setting powders a lot, but today I'm gonna be using Cinnamon Bun to set under the eye. And Cinnamon Bun looks like it's right about my complexion, I think. Let me see. Again, you gotta do what works for you. I'm using my Nikia Joy Cosmetics powder, and I like this one because I do feel like it helps give me a poreless complexion, and I'm just gonna I'm not using a lot, we're not trying to bake. We're just gonna set under the eyes and around the nose and where anything breaks up, that's where you want to apply your powder. And then I'm gonna put a little on my nose because she did that as well. And then I have to set my forehead because if I don't, my lines will crease really bad. And now I'm also just going over where I contoured my nose so that can blend in better. I do like how that looks better. I do feel like it doesn't look, sometimes my nose contour can be a little much. Okay, now she's using a powder that's more of the shade of her face. And she says she really packs that on around her mouth because that is where it breaks up. So I'm really gonna pack on the powder around my mouth because I, my skin's oily. I don't know what to tell you, my skin's real oily, girl. In the corners of my nose, this is especially helpful for those of y'all who, I have a whole video dedicated to why your foundation never stays on your nose. I did a whole video talking about this, but powder, 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 translucent powder is gonna be your best friend. And because I sweat like a boy under my eyes, and like I said again, my forehead to keep these wrinkles at bay. And I'm just putting this around where the contour and the highlight meet. Bronzer as we know it is not only good for bringing the bronzeness back to your complexion, but girl, it's also great to help enhance the brows. I'm similar to how we took that contour color and we started basically shaping the inner eye area. I'm also gonna take a bit of the bronzer, starting once again in the same spot at the head of the brow. Mine still looks pretty dark. So I'm gonna take a small brush and I'm not even gonna add any product. I'm just gonna, why does that look like it has product on it? It does! <laughs> we just darken that up some. I think that actually kind of looks good though. Hmm. I'm gonna start pushing some of that next. bronzer color into our brow. And this is a great way to kind of soften out the head of the brow. If you have trouble really getting too strong of a brow, just do this. I am gonna use the bronzer color from this palette and I don't really need a ton because we contoured so efficiently earlier. I'm gonna go in with my, what is this? Cover FX two, 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 Perfector Face Palette, which I love this. And we're just going back around where we contoured and you're almost setting that as well because we didn't put any powder on top of that. But like I said, I did feel like I kind of lost it and I personally like to contour a lot. She doesn't. So again, we're doing what works for us. But I like that I still see my blush. Y'all know how I am about my blush. And we're just lightly bronzing up the skin everything is coming together so well and i love the dimension in my face 
But before I do blush, I'm gonna take a slightly lighter translucent okay, powder. Okay, so the step I did earlier with the light powder, forehead. she's doing the now. Powder. So I just did mine the out of order. Of my chin, the bridge of my nose, and then right under my eye for a little peekaboo highlight. And then when I apply blush, my favorite way to apply it is <laughs> She's a blush girl too, so she's going in with more blush. Because what you can actually do, soften out that under eye powder, and that is pretty much it. Thing with that. Not everything, but the blush area. And then I'm gonna take my sponge and just go right in front. And she says that is pretty much it. So I'm gonna finish the rest of my face. I need to finish my eyes. I need to do something with these brows. And then I will come back. I, she doesn't show this, but I will spray my face again when I come back on camera. So let me get all that done and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so this is it for the final look. I have to say, I do feel like everything looks very seamless. I'm putting on highlighter. I can't believe she didn't put on highlighter. Maybe she used more glowy products than I did. I don't know. I'm going to use this palette. I'm going to take the this highlighter shade here. Because, baby, this look looks way too good to not have highlighter on but I do feel like everything just looks a lot more seamless and blended and you can still see like you can see the blush of course I did put some on top but even before like everything just looked a lot more I don't know I like it though and we're just gonna have to see if it holds up which I don't see why it wouldn't I wasn't gonna put on lashes but then I remembered I have a pair of lashes that I just got in the mail. These are by a company named Treasure Box. I did get five pairs. Let me grab the other ones. Let me show y'all real quick. Two or three? Three of them are magnetic. And the reason I decided to pick these up, I saw a friend of mine posting about these on Instagram. And then when I started asking questions, looking around, this is a black owned beauty brand. And it is a black woman who I believe is here in Texas. I might be wrong. I'll put it on the screen, but these are the lashes that I picked up. I picked up Sardonyx, Gold, and Amethyst. These are the magnetic lashes, and every pair that you buy comes with the magnetic liner. So I thought that was cool because I have magnetic liners I don't like. Hopefully I won't have issues with this one because I have had issues where they burn my eyes before. So this is the pair Sardonyx. This is the most natural pair of the magnetic ones that I got. And then I also picked up, like I said, gold. These are a little more, <laughs> definitely more than what I usually wear. So not that they're too full, they just look really long. And then these are amethyst same thing i think they're gorgeous i felt like my other magnetic lashes that i had were just kind of like if i was doing a super glam look i didn't have a pair that was like "Ooh, let me amp this up and these definitely do my main concern i did get regular lashes as well and those i did have to trim quite a bit off so i don't know how i would do that if i even could with these so we'll just have to see because i am gonna wear magnetic ones today but then these are the regular lashes this is in royalty super cute i wanted some that would still add you know some fluff these are a lot curlier than what i normally wear as well I didn't want to get what i always buy but i also wanted to get something i would wear and then this is in jade i really like these they're not as clustered but she does have for those of you who love dramatic lashes she does have some more dramatic ones on her website so we are going to do the sardonyx pair and i'm just going to do one on camera to show you all right so i'm going to shake this up i put a you know, I never thought to smell my other ones. Um, I put a thin line of just regular liner on earlier. 
So far, I'm not feeling anything. I am gonna apply two layers because that's how I've always done with my magnetic lashes. We're just gonna let that one dry. We're gonna apply another layer. And then we're gonna see for my lips, cause y'all always ask me and I forget to tell you, I have my, which liner? I have a ColourPop liner on. This is pretty sure it's BFF3. Yeah, BFF3 with my Tom Ford E, y'all know I can't pronounce it to save my life. E-Q-U-U-S, e that one, 100, from the matte liner. And then I have my Lifter Gloss, Maybelline Lifter Gloss in the shade Opal. That is my lip combo today. Everything is dry, so we're gonna see. I normally put my lashes on with tweezers, so hopefully this works. I tell you what, these definitely stick better than my, oh, but that's too close. Ow, ow, ow. Yeah, see, that's what I'm worried about. I'm gonna have to put them, all right, let's try this again. I need to not put them so close on the inner corner because I can't deal. I don't know how people do. Yeah, we can do that, okay. And I just have to wear it a little further out on my eyeball which is fine because it'll just make it flare. Oh, that feels like it is on tight. Like normally I put them on and they don't feel like they're on. This feels like it's like, okay. For some reason, if I close my eye tight, there's a little tiny piece that is sticking me, which I thought about, I'm gonna cut it off. I will say that this liner sticks very well, but I can't deal with what is sticking me. Let me cut this off real quick. I don't know if you guys can see that there is a tiny little piece right there that is sticking me on the inner corner. Hold on. All right, let's try this again. I will say that these go on a lot easier. It's weird because I feel like it says that it's magnetic liner, but it's sticky like real liner i don't know how they do that yeah i'm gonna have to add more liner these are just a little big for my eyes but i'm gonna add more liner on the inner corner just to make sure that that sticks because that is usually where mine comes up but these lashes are very pretty and this liner is really good so that is one lash there. Yeah, that's better. That was sticking me. I was like, I can't. So if any of you have small eyes like me and you're gonna try these out, there's a tiny little bit on the inner corner that you will have to cut off. I'm gonna put the other one on off camera and then that will be the final look. All right, that took a little longer than expected, but the lashes are on. I hope you can see them. So I had to actually put the glue a little higher like I was doing a wing and stick it more to my lid as opposed to my lash line. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but I couldn't follow the natural shape of my eyes because then this was like even more downturn than it is right now. So. I like how these look though, because they give you a lot of drama at the edges, but then they're not too crazy on the inside. I don't like the ones that are like super full in this area here. I think my eyeshadow still shows through. I don't know what is in this liner, where she went. <laughs> I don't know what's in this liner, but it sticks. Like this, I've never been able to put on a magnetic lash, take it off, put it back on, take it off, put it back, and it stays. And it's like stuck. This is not coming off, so. Oh, got some of my eye. Okay, that is it for this look. The foundation looks amazing. I feel like my face is not going anywhere. Everything looks good. It is blended. I added a little highlighter. You know how your girl likes to do. So that is it for this look. I will keep you guys updated in the comment box. I'm not gonna check in later. I got too much going on today, but yeah, Jackie Ina's makeup tips and tricks and application. 
This will not be something I do if I have somewhere to go and I'm in a hurry, but when I have time to sit down and blend it all out, or maybe with practice, it'll be a lot faster, but I love how this looks. This might have to be incorporated for my wedding day. I don't know, we'll see. Thank you guys for sticking with me to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you've tried any of these tricks before, if you are gonna take any of these tips, I'd love to hear from you. If you're new, I hope you hit that subscribe button and join the family. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.